Hello studs and welcome back to Studs in Studio. Today I'm going to hide my mediocre painting skills under many layers of flocking while I make this mossy home from Kiki's Delivery Service. This is episode 3 in my Ghibli crafting series, so subscribe and all that, but before we fly off and start crafting without a plan, let's take a walk and appreciate the nature we'll be replicating in miniature form. I've always been in awe of how moss grows pretty much anywhere. Just give it a bit of moist pavement and it will become a beautiful earth rug. As long as we're out, let's take a cue from Kiki and get close up to the trees. There are many great crafting materials to be found in nature. For the moss, perhaps some of this plush Woodland Scenics blended turf. And for the climbing ivy, we thank Gaia for her Woodland Scenics medium green foliage. And what about for bushes? Oh wow, an old natural ice cream container filled with foam clump foliage. Cool, let's go craft. We're gonna start today's craft by making the windows first using a sheet of this cross stitch canvas or person plastic as some people call it. I made about this many windows to start. For the walls, I'm using dollar store foam board. Then I cut out a bunch of window holes and then carefully tried to glue them on. Just, um, it's not good though. Just try to glue it on the back so you can hide all the glue lumps. These square windows are pretty good, but let's pull out some of this special diagonal window panes for an extra exciting window. And here's all the walls. If you're curious how it's assembled and you want to make one for yourself, I've included a very confusing template that I made which you can find in the description. Now we need some scrap cardboard for the roof. Any junk works. I prefer leftover food packaging. To get a nice clean roof ridge, use a sharp knife and just barely score in a folding line. I've chosen to glue it face down so it doesn't look like I'm sponsored by Wheat Thins. Yet. Only attempt this next move if you have a low temp hot glue gun, otherwise a little cardboard scrap works to spread out the glue weld. Since I'm building this to be 28mm scale, I wish it was a little bit taller. Ah, perfect. We've gained some height, but at what cost? This edge needs to be cleaned up, so I'm going to build a little stone foundation using ripped up chunks of foam board. The movie version doesn't actually have a stone foundation, so please don't tell Miyazaki. To add texture, we're going to shake these around in a can with some rocks and let the flavors get to know each other. <coughs> All this shaking produces quite a bit of dust from my low grade rock, so you're going to want to wait till the dust settles before cracking into this. And now with our slightly worn down foam, we're going to puzz 3D these pieces all the way around the house. I made a stairway out of foam, but to make it a deck we need to throw some boards on it. These are coffee stirring sticks, which I'm bisecting to make them coffee stirring the smaller sticks. Uh, coffee stirring splinter? Eh, no. No, I don't think so. Here I'm cutting out the door. Then I used this metal ring from a necklace for the handle. Coffee stirring sticks are also excellent for hiding your shame, such as the visible seam lines on the adjoining walls. The house needed beams anyway. After you get tired of cutting through wood, just switch to thinly sliced paperboard and finish up the windows that way. For some dynamic building, try positioning windows open in cool action poses. Then I chopped out some tiny bricks and glued them over the foundation on just the left side of the house. Then I used more coffee stirring sticks and paperboard to make the front awning. I'm going to paint it separately before gluing it on, that way I don't have to take a brush into this tiny deck space later. Speaking of other details I made off camera, here's a little pop-out bay window I made using the same ingredients. And once again, more sticks and more hot glue to create this little firewood shanty. For quick and easy roof shingles, I'm using strips of corrugated paper. But wait, what shingles am I even talking about? The roof is a complete garden. This is true, but I knew in my heart there were shingles under that moss, and I had this idea that maybe the shingles would show through in an interesting way after I put the moss on. In hindsight, this isn't the case, but it was good shingle practice anyway. Since a lot of these details are going to be covered in moss, I was pretty fast and loose with making them actually look decent. I am fully relying on flocking as a crutch here, so please take a look at this poor excuse for a chimney before it's moss laden. This foil texture is pointless. 
And for the final details, some watered down modeling paste to add a stucco texture to the exterior walls. Oh, we stipple that goop. Now let's go paint. It wasn't actually a pain to paint this. I had a pretty good time. The pain only comes from knowing that I would be hiding everything in moss later. I don't regret it though. It was good practice and knowing that there is a completely painted model underneath these permanent layers of moss is how I sleep soundly at night. The nice part is this afforded me a little extra leniency in being sloppy around edges. If I end up missing a spot, then I'll just hide it in moss later. I pretty much did single pass base coats on every surface, except for the walls which I splotched in off-white and then built up layers with off-off-white and off-tan. And then I dry brushed everything using the same colors from the base coats, but they were lightened with a few squirts of off-white or not quite cream. There were a couple of detail spots that needed a little bit of metal coloration. I went with gold for the top of the chimney and the door handle, and then it was time to tie it all together with some homemade acrylic washes. To add moss to this little chia pet, go set it outside for three months and let nature handle it. I actually wanted to film this portion of the video outside, but then the rains came and I decided to stay for the rest of time. So it begins. If you can't find these products growing in your local woodland, they're always in season online. I've included some links in the description where you can stay at home and have fake foliage come right to your door. I've said it before but I flocking love adding flock to craft projects. Maybe it's because I live in a particularly green region of the world that is somewhat reminiscent of a Ghibli location, or it might also be that I just don't think I'm a very good painter and covering up mistakes with intricate green details is a good way to distract the eye from any flaws I might have. I mean, any flaws this model might have. In my experience, old and decrepit is way easier to pull off than fresh and clean. After saving these failures for later, I'm using some of this vine foliage to cover up the base of the green we've laid down so far. All you need is a tiny nug of this fluffy green spiderweb to cover a decent amount of area. I'm painting on a layer of tacky glue, then fiddling with it until it stops sticking to my fingers. Don't let the graceful editing mislead you though, I removed all the shots where my fingers kept ripping off these beard hairs. Then we're going to spank the bag because I really like the texture and the color whoop, of, of the little clumps that were in this. I'm filling out some of the bald spots and adding some randomness by taking a large clump of the extra fluff that I spanked out and dabbing it all around until it looks much less uniform. It still wasn't quite where I wanted it to be in terms of a luscious full head of hair, so I'm going to add some more of this vine foliage. After this sweet summer child was fully tucked in under a green blanket, I sealed it in forever with a generous misting of watered down Mod Podge and then a final sprinkling of green flock for good luck. I hot glued down a few bushes in select areas, mostly areas where the underlying painting wasn't that great. But now it's time to fetch some firewood so Kiki's family can survive the winter. Ah, perfect. This one stick is enough to keep this tiny family warm for months. And for the final detail, I'm painting on some flowers to the vines and bushes because it's cute. But it wouldn't be Kiki's delivery service without the witch we all know. There she is. The plan is to turn this nice waving person into a witch on a broom. Kiki wears a dress, so we'll start by shaving off her pants, and then severing her torso so that she's in a better sitting position on the broom, which is actually a toothpick. I'm going to warn you up front that the final Kiki is not going to look good. It's a combination of me running out of time, very little experience with painting plastic minis, and unfamiliarity with this new sculpting material. This is the first time I've used this two-part epoxy green stuff to sculpt tiny details and it was very reminiscent of working with freshly chewed gum. And there we go, it is now a vague suggestion of a subtle nod to Kiki. But you know what it's missing? That's right, a cat. To make Gigi the cat, I'm stumbling through it in the same way I made Kiki. I wasn't prepared for how eagerly the green stuff would stick to itself, but I powered through it and moved on to painting. I was real lazy here. I contemplated just filming this entire section in a wide shot so you couldn't see how bad it really is, but this is a cautionary tale. Anyway, what do you think? This is terrible. I can't deliver it like this. I would classify this mini as passing the across the room test. It looks okay from long distance, but as soon as you get close up... Ma! 
I wanted to mount this monster on the house, so I clipped off the dangerous end of a safety pin, painted it black, then stabbed it into the roof to make it appear as if she's flying away from home, and that means it's done. Special thanks to all the new patrons that have kept these videos going. A lovely shout out to Fool King, Gerald, Milo Keeble, MR Lewis, Megan Donnelly, Masher T, Steven, J Vinji, and Siphon. All the coins on Patreon are used towards the mission of helping me make more videos. Check out the link below to see some of the spicy benefits you might get. If you can't support via Patreon, no worries. I am always thirsty for any likes, comments, and subscribes you can offer. As always, I read every comment and jot down all of your crafting suggestions in my long and growing list of potential topics. That's all for this week. I'll see you next time, and thanks for watching, studs.